Cool. So I'll tell you all what, um, we got some people in here now. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Um, you know, I appreciate everybody showing up on time. So I'm going to make sure that I'm on time and, and we'll get this rolling. Um, if I break out, it's probably going to be a lag because it's Zoom and that's just how it is. But if I break up too much and you need me to repeat myself, you guys just drop your questions in the, the question part. Um, <clears throat> I'll definitely answer everyone's questions. Um, at the end, I'm going to see if I can cut the microphones on so that you can ask your questions. If not, we'll just we'll just uh, we'll do it this way. Um, I'll definitely have to make sure for this next one. You guys are the guinea pigs. So this is actually the first time we have um, done a group setting webinar. Um, to kind of explain server side, talk to a lot of people all day. I've, I've spoken to a lot of you guys, um, so I definitely know you there. Um, when you hear anything from server side, it's me. So my name is Justin. Um, I was a member of service side myself for about three years. Um, great, loved it. I actually joined because of hunt swaps. So I wanted to travel all over the country. I wanted to hunt. But I didn't really want to do a guide. I didn't want to really pay to hunt, I guess you could say. Not that I'm against it or anything like that. I'm friends with a lot of guides. Um, I don't knock any type of hunting. But I wanted to kind of do a do-it-yourself, more so just for, for myself. Um, so that hunt swap, I was able to meet up with guys all across the country, like what we're doing right now, guys and girls, um, and kind of trade a hunt for a hunt. So I live in Florida. We chase Osceola turkeys. That's that's what we have primarily here. Um, there are some hybrids, but I bring people down. We'll fish. You know, we'll do things like that. We'll go in the swamp and, you know, have a great time. There's some of the best hunting experiences I've ever had were with service side members, and I've been hunting my whole life. Um, just because getting like-minded people from all over the country is, I mean, it's priceless in itself. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. I, like I said, I was a member, Jimmy, you know, he's the owner of the company. The company kind of grew to the point where they needed a little more help. Um, they just needed a little more resources to, to make sure that they were providing everything that we say we're going to provide. Um, so that's where I came into it. I used to work for a company and, and what I did was I kind of grew companies. I, um, you know, would make sure that the customer was always happy uh, make sure that we were providing things and, and people understood the value. So that's actually why I came here because I know so much about service side because I was such an interactive member. Um, you know, I took advantage of every perk that we have. I literally squeezed service side. I mean, to the point where I, I definitely felt like I got my value out of it. And um, now I work here. So I'm able to kind of give that feeling and, and help to, to everyone else. Um, so I tell y'all what, um, for those that just jumped in, if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat there. We'll keep it, we'll keep it casual. Um, tell y'all a little bit about service side real quick. Okay. So service side was created in 2011. Um, Jimmy, he's the owner, like I mentioned and a group of friends, um, they would travel all over the country hunting. Um, they would go on little trips. They were in college. So, you know, money was tight. Travel was hard. So they'd go on weekends, things like that. And they would film their hunts. Well, fast forward a couple of years, they actually ended up getting a TV show um, and it was called Deer Slayer TV. Um, you can check out the episodes. They're still on YouTube and stuff. Um, real popular. He, he went ahead. They did that for a while. And then they kind of started transitioning away from the from the TV, like field staff boom kind of era. And they wanted to take all the resources, all the culture, community, just everything you learn from being in the hunting industry. Um, and those that are on this uh, webinar that know about the hunting industry, um, once you kind of get into it and you kind of see how things work, um, there's a lot of value, a lot of net. Um, sorry. All right. Hopefully I'm back. Um, yeah, sorry about that fellas. I'll just step back. So <clears throat> they started it, had the TV show kind of moved on, um, to create in this community. So they took everything they had networking, everything like that. And they put it into a club. Okay. Um, 
they put it into a club and they open it up. You know, we open it up to usually five or so members per state. We only open once or twice a year. We keep it super exclusive. Um, you know, we are very tight with a lot of big names in the company. Um, everyone that we're partnered with, we actually speak to the owner or the person in charge daily. That's who we consult with. There's there's no middlemen. Who I talk to when I give you guys information is going to be from the source. Um, so we we have things like that. Um, but that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to give all that. We wanted to give out all that perks and, and opportunity and stuff that they were getting from being in the industry. And they wanted to make a, a community out of it. Um, so we have around almost around 700 members right now uh, between field staff and hunt club. Um, I'd say probably four or 500 for field staff and then the rest are hunt clubs so around 700. Um, we've had some guys that have been in since 2011. Uh, we've had some guys that just joined last week. So we have a little bit of everything. Uh, we have uh, people that are famous. We have people that are just started hunting yesterday. Um, we have all types of hunters, okay? Female, male, kids, you name it, we have it. Um, and that's how our community has grown to what it is now. So that's a little bit of history on service side there. Um, like I said, if you guys have any questions, just drop them in here. I know I'm kind of scooting fast, but I just wanted to cover this so we had lots of questions. So I covered how I got into it. I covered what service side is. Now let's talk about where you guys come in, field staff, okay? Um, so we've all heard the name field staff. We've taken it to another level, okay? Most of your field staff programs, and if you guys do your research, you'll see if you already haven't been in the industry, it is flooded. We, It, it is what it is. You know, let's call a spade a spade. There's a lot of people out there taking their phones. They're doing the field staff game. Well, that's got flooded. So these big companies that, I, that I'll speak to, um, small companies too, but just we'll say hunting in the industry, um, companies in general, and they have told us like they're, they're flooded. They have so many field staff. It's hard to keep people on. So unless they don't have a ton of followers, which some people do, some people don't, they're really not going to bring them on. Some companies will. It really just all depends. It's very situational. But with us, our program's a little bit different. So with our field staff program, we offer hunt swaps. So our hunt link program. Now with that hunt swap, it's not just you own land and you trade someone with land. I hunt public land. When people come down here, I'm like, we're hitting public land. We might kill a bird. We might not see a bird. I'm just letting you know, we're probably going to kill a bird. We normally do kill a bird. But if we don't, I just, I'm honest and I tell them what's going on. Okay. Um, but it's not just a trade for a trade. We've got guys that are experts who will go meet up with some new, we had this one guy in Ohio bought like 60 acres, had freaking giant bucks that make you sick on his property. Didn't know how to hunt them. That guy went to his place, helped him kill a 160 inch buck. And then he killed a 160 inch buck the next day as like his reward for helping him. Um, it was literally just a great story because it kind of took hunt swaps to a new level of it's not just, you don't just have to have land to do this. If you have it and you can do it great. Um, we have land for hog hunting. If you guys want to hog hunt, we got land. We'll go out there, drink a couple lattes, shoot a couple pigs, cook them up. It'd be a great time. Um, but not everyone has that. And we understand that. Um, so we, we make it where it's think outside the box. Um, maybe you're a, a novice hunter and you'd like to hook up with one of these experienced people, hit them up, chat with them. Um, the networking is another perk. Okay. So it may not seem like a perk, but with networking, we have exclusive members in all 50 States. Okay. We have guys in Hawaii. We have guys in Alaska, just had a guy move to Alaska. He's been texting me every day. You know, they, they're up there spring bear hunting, um, just moved up there to be a mountain man. And we talk all the time. And the point is, we have members in all 50 states. So if you are wanting to get out west, sure, you could do it yourself. You, we've, we've all seen Meat Eater. We know, like, you could do your research, Google it, go out there. But wouldn't it be better to meet somebody? And on the opposite end, we're not asking for hunting spots. Like, your hunting spot's your hunting spot. Uh, we have a rule here, you know, one of those unwritten rules. Like, if you hunt with someone, like, don't drop a pin unless it's helping you for while you're there. Like that's, that's their spot. And, and we like to keep that, that exclusiveness and that trust. And 
I mean, we've been around 11 years. We've never had an issue. We just, that's the culture that we have. It's, it's, it's an unwritten sportsman rule. So when it comes out, but most of our guys meet up all the time. So that networking, um, another perk is, is the, probably what a lot of you guys have seen is paid content. We're not just saying, Hey, be a part of service side. Give me your videos. Give me your pictures. And here's a free t-shirt. It's, it's not like that. We're going to pay you for those videos. We pay up to $500 for a hunting video. And when I say a hunting video, not, hey, I'm in my truck drinking coffee, Jason Aldean's playing, we go shoot a 160-inch buck, and then here he is. That's not, that's not what we're talking about hunting videos. We've all seen, you know, that's what a lot of hunting videos are. Tell a story. The wind wasn't right. You had to wait two days. Um you know, you'd been working on your food plot and I don't know, the neighbor shot at your deer and missed and you're, you know, you somehow were able to get him in. You had a mineral site or, you know, he was running or, or whatever the case may be. Um, so tell a story, tell the, tell the listener for you content creators, what happened? Tell us what's going on. What's the wind doing? Give us the history on the animal. Those videos are always going to be used. I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't going to sugarcoat it. If you include culture and family or community, if you include the story of your success, it's edited somewhat decent. Am I back? Okay. Am I, am I back? Sorry. I just upgraded my internet and everything and it's still freaking zoom. We even pay for it. So just bear with me. I don't like technology. I'm a hunter, not a computer guy. So just bear with me. I appreciate everyone's patience. Um, but what I was saying was, um, they'll just ask is that $500 per video or per year? That's $500 per video. I would say, honestly, last year, uh, we last season, we paid out a couple thousand dollars. We had a lot of videos. Um, I had guys that just started filming on their phones. I had guys that have $3,000 setups. I mean, the way phones are nowadays, if you got good stuff, that's great. It's going to get you good content. But if you don't, don't let it deter you. An artist is an artist. If you're, if you're dropping bucks and dropping animals and you're telling a story and you got a phone, I don't care it's your phone unless it's like 19, 1999, early 2000s flip phone. Then, you know, don't hold me to that, but um, do what you can. That's 500 per video. That's $100 per how-to video, how to restring your bow, how to balance your arrows, what, whatever, you're, whatever you're doing here, food plots, whatever. And then we do $50 per gear review. So when we say gear review, guys, we are not looking for an advertisement. I love who I love to love bottomlands, love badlands. I love who I love to, but it's not a commercial. Tell us what works. Like if you're using Walmart camo and you got a $60 hand-me-down bow and you're making it work, let us know what's going on. You know, if you're using the best of the best, let us know what you thought about it. Like that's what the gear reviews are is honest feedback. Let's have some success in there too, though. If we could, it really helps for the video and I'll, I'll definitely always choose that one to put up too, but we want to help hunters. That's the, that's the whole reason behind the gear review. It's not to push product. Like our partners that we're partnering with and we're with some big names. You know, I was talking to Cody the other day from Lone Wolf and XOP, you know, we're friends with a lot of good people, um, you know, in the community and I'm very blessed for that. I, I love that. I'll, I'll never take advantage of that. And I really like that because we're able to ask them questions. But at the end of the day, we don't want to push product. We want to help others be successful too, or learn bo both ways, teach or learn. Um, Chris said, if you want to get GoPros from Facebook Marketplace. So yeah, GoPros are good. Obviously we know GoPros are, are like tactic cams. They're good for second angles. That's when they do their best is that B-roll footage. But 
you know, if you got a solid freaking kill shot on a on a GoPro, I mean, I'm not gonna say that's not a you know, if you can splice that into your video and 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 have all the B-roll and and anim and um, I'm sorry, cinematic and all that stuff going on, and you got a GoPro kill shot, go for it. Just like I said, head to the YouTube channel. It's Servicide. Check out some of those videos. See if that's something you guys can do. Um, some of them are freaking Steven Spielberg, and some of them are, like I said, me, cell phone guy. Like I use a cell phone. I um, I actually have a, I actually have a Fourth Arrow camera arm. They're one of our partners. We get like a thirty percent discount with them. Um, I actually have their camera arm for my phone. It's specifically designed for my phone. And you know why I bought it? Because we get a thirty percent discount, and I wanted to see how great it is. Fourth Arrow is a good name, but. We won't go down that route. Um, let's see here. Does it have to be us on the camera, or can it be a client I'm videoing for? So that yeah, that's fine. If you're vid, if you're the video guy, or someone's videoing you, completely fine. Just make sure you have permission, okay? So especially with like kids and stuff, like you, you gotta have permission. You gotta have permission from their families if they're underage. If they're of age, make sure that they consent to it, just because. That's just the world we live in. I, I'll leave it at that. I won't even get into it. Just make sure you got their permission and it's fine. Um, we'll, we'll allow it. Just follow that rubric. And for anyone that wants the rubric, hit me up. I'll send it your way. The number that I've been texting on is the work number. I can email it to you, whatever you want to do. Um, but, okay, so we're good on the questions there. Now, that was a perk that we kind of went on for a minute. Um, paid content, hunt swaps networking opportunities now let's talk some other stuff education whether you want to teach or learn okay keep an open mind with this we have webinars seminars podcasts you name it we have it editing editing uh webinars editing podcasts all that stuff we have that experts not experts novice amateurs all that in our hunt lab okay you get full access to that when you're a member you're able to go through it years and years of, of stuff I try to record everything, even even what we're doing right now, just because why not why not educate people or have it for someone that needs it. Um, so the Hunt Lab's another perk. Um, let's see here. Ian said, "What is the best app to edit videos?" Okay, so we actually have a webinar on this. I can hook you up with this too, uh, Ian. I'll send it your way. Um, we have a uh, playlist on YouTube that we have hidden um, where we keep a lot of stuff on, and I can send it your way. This is from an Android guy. I have a Google Chromebook. I have a little laptop, and I have a um, SG uh, like S20 or S21. It's like the second newest one. It's, it's not the newest one. Um, shoots good, 1080, 4K, all that jazz. I use that actually for my editing, okay? It does two things. It's free. It's easy because it's an Android. It's got a big, big screen. I, don't, I can't speak on Apple. Uh, they have some stuff too, but I can edit my videos on this. And you can see it's pretty large. I'm six foot five, 250 to put it in perspective. That's a pretty big phone right there. Um, I edit on that. And what I use is I actually use, um, it's called U-Cut, okay? So it looks like that. It looks like that. It's called U-Cut. It's free. It's real simple. I am a little better now that I've been working in the industry, but you asked me a year ago, I couldn't have told you any, even one answer to that. Um, I use U-Cut for Android, but type in Google, use the free ones, get used to it now. If you want to take it to the next level, there is, uh, I think it's called uh, DaVinci maybe, um, and um, I can't remember the other one, but we got a webinar on it, so I'll hook you up. I don't use those. Those are for like the MacBook and, and your computer. Those are the higher higher ones, you know, free to 300 buck kind of thing. Um, but it really just depends on what kind of editing you do. But if you're like me, I like it quick, easy. I'm just, I'm not the content person. I'm, I'm the, you know, redneck in the woods, give you guys your value, make sure you're happy. I don't do a lot with the video in, but, but I know what looks good kind of thing. Um, so, but I can definitely get you the answers to that, Ian. Um, I'll send it your way. Um, which you guys have access to that. So if you're like Ian over here and you're trying to figure out what's the best app for editing videos, we have, you know, lots of information on that stuff. Um, and it's, and it's, we're always updating it too. It's not just old stuff. 
Um, let's see here. So we spoke on those perks. Uh, we have our podcast. Um, for you guys that have your own business or you have businesses, things like that, we have our own hunting app. We actually have a classified section. I feel like it's completely fine as members if you guys want to put your guide services or things like that up. Obviously, if you see you're the only one posting and it's like every day, every hour, that might be a little too much. But put your stuff out there. We support small businesses. We, we support the small guy. That doesn't mean we're not partnering with the big guy, too, because we all know it's it's nice to have a rhino blind or, you know, a, a nice bow and things like that. But we're for the little guys. So we're definitely going to help you out um, for those guys that, you know, want to get their name out there. OK, we're going to help you do that. Hit me up. We'll put your videos out. You know, we'll put you on a, on, a, on a platform there. We'll help you get your stuff out. But at the end of the day, service side helps those almost who help themselves. Like the more you put in, the more you're going to get out. If you're that guy that's putting his stuff out there, putting your name out there, we know how to do it tactfully and when it when it's not tactfully. If you can tactfully do that, you're going to get your name out there and, and that's how you get views and that's how you get looked at. How do you communicate every, with everyone? So Phil said, how do we communicate with everyone? Facebook, app, group emails, and is there a list? So we actually have a website. It's serviceside.com, but I'm actually rebuilding it. It's almost done. We've had our, our, uh, our people on it. They're, they're doing a great job. It's so much easier. It's going to be you guys are going to love it. I love it. It's it's so simple. It's so simplistic. Everything's easy to find. You're going to absolutely love it. It's going to be very easy to upload your videos. You just push a button, boom, send us your video. It's real easy. But to answer your question, Phil, we have a public Facebook page. It's called Service Side Nation. That's public. Now, that's we'll put some stuff on there, but that's for just the masses. Then we have a private Facebook page, okay? It's called Service Side hunt team it's a private page only active members are on that as soon as your membership's inactive it it won't let you on um so that's for active members um so your field staff or hunt club we have our, our other socials instagram tiktok which we also pay out for tiktoks just throwing that out there uh it goes off of views so however many views is we just give you the money that they give us we don't make a, we don't make any money on content um at all uh, I think last year we even had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views. We had like 74 bucks on it. We don't, hunting is, is demonized unless you have sponsors and stuff. So we, the main thing is getting your name out there or things like that, or putting your story out there. Um, so we have the, the groups we do for field staff every single month. We have what we call a meetup. Usually I'll do it the second week to give people time to get past that first week. Things simmer down. We'll do it on like a Wednesday night. Um, if I got to change it, I'll start talking to people. But we normally do it on a Wednesday night for about an hour. We get together. Field staff shows up. Pour a drink. We just talk, you know, kind of catch up for those guys that aren't able to meet up with each other. We'll do it on Zoom. Um, we'll have everyone's pictures. It's, it's a meeting, so it actually will work unlike this. Um, but we have that. And we also send a newsletter out every month. So for field staff, we're going to let you know what was last month and what you missed and what's this month. So you'll always be in the loop. We also send you a text message and we ask you, would you like email or text? Because I don't want to spam you guys up. I, I don't. Um, I want to do what's best for you and keep you in the loop. Um, but I'm not going to spam you up. So we'll ask you what you like and I'll let you know when I send the newsletter out so you can take a look. Um, every month we do something different. So I have the featured partner of the month. So a company that shows good values, they're into conservation, they're making moves, they're innovating, they're doing good things, their customer service is on point, you can get them on a freaking phone. Um, those are companies that we put as our featured partner. And with the featured partner, we kind of put that company on a pedestal just for the month. We do specific podcasts. We do live webinars. So last night we did one on the growing season on basics for those guys that think they need a lot of money to food plot. We taught them how to do it for pennies on the dollar. Um, so we had a webinar like that last night and uh, we also have a giveaway. So just for being a service side member, you're going to be entered in this giveaway. They're giving away a whole food plot set. They're giving away like, I think it's like eight acres worth of, of food plot stuff. 
Um, even if you don't use it, I'm sure you got a friend that can use it. Um, and then we hook it up with a ton of swag, like the hats, shirts, all kinds of stuff. I got a whole boatload back there, swag. Um, so we hook you up every month. We have a winner for the giveaway. And then we also have a raffle just for members. Cause we're always trying to hook y'all up. You know, at the end of the day, we want to make sure our members are happy. You're getting everything you can. Yeah, some people don't care about free stuff, but why not throw you some stuff if we can do it? If partners send me stuff, I don't want it. Like, I'm sending it to you guys. Um, just got a box in from a company that sent me some shirts and hats. Can we throw it in the giveaway? I, I, you know, I want that to go to the members. Um, you know, I don't even take, I don't even go hunting on work time. Like, I hunt on the weekends when I'm off. Um, just because I want, like, when I'm here, I, I'm, I'm for you guys. That's that's what I do. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting paid for. Um, so, Phil, to answer your question, we have lots of forms of how we'll communicate. Um, and we also have our own hunting app. So if that's easier, that's normally more of a utility. So it's going to have the partner discounts. It's going to have the perks. It's going to have all that stuff. Um, but that's more of a utility. But we can also chat on it. Some guys have been off Facebook for a long time. Um, and, you know, we wanted to have something there because – we all know who could have went one way, it could have went the other. So we're just glad that uh, the app is something that we were able to create in case it does. With the app, just so you all know, you can do whatever you want. Just don't cut each other in pieces with, with verbal you know, abuse. Treat each other with respect. There's a difference between hazing and cutting someone in half. We, I hope we know the difference between a roast session and, and um, just, just demolishing someone because they filled their tag uh, legally and ethically. Um, you know, if we see something we don't like and it's really bad, I, trust me, I, I'm in front of the socials all day. I'll see it. I'll, I'll take care of it, but we never have that issue. Um, but that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I think I covered everything with that, with the field staff. So if you guys have any field staff questions, definitely let me know. Um, and let me talk about hunt club real quick. Okay. So the hunt club is our lower tier membership. You get the you get some of the perks, you know, you get the discounts, you get the networking, you get the hunt swaps, um, but you don't get the payouts for the content. Uh, you don't get a lot of the bigger things. It's more so just to get your feet wet in the program. Um, for those guys that really aren't willing to kind of jump into field staff and, and get rolling, they want to kind of sit back. Maybe they're working like 78 hours a week and they got a baby on their hip and you know the wife's mad at them because hunting season is a little too long and you know, that's that the hunt club's kind of for them where they can see what service side's about at their own pace. They're not as pressured, like, oh my gosh, I, I didn't get to check stuff. I'm just so busy. Trust me, I know my notebook has 80 things I got to do by tomorrow. Um, but we got you. That's what the hunt club's for. Um, Phil said, I see the application. It says 6 30. The sign up is closed. And when the field staff is full for 2022, is it full? So, it is not currently full, but we're slowly trickling in, if that makes sense. Um, we don't, like I said, we don't do this to drive a bunch of revenue. We only like to keep our group tight and exclusive. So we only let in the amount of people we need um, to keep it tight and exclusive because the way we grow, that's just that's just been the best way for the business. It's steady, slow growth. Um, we don't need to bring in... 3,000 members tomorrow because we want to make sure we just do it right and we have good culture and foundation. And like I said, I have probably out of the 700, I probably have at least maybe like 100 guys that have been in here almost the whole time, if not a little less, maybe like 50 to 100, 100 is probably high, 50 to 100 guys that have been in here the whole time. So if that doesn't tell you anything, um, you know, also go check out the reviews, scroll through the socials. I mean, we've, we've had the same social since 2011. So you can literally go back to 2011 if you want and see what was going on in service side. Um, so yes, it is still open. And how exclusive is the field staff versus the hunt club? Guys, I'll be honest with you. The field staff is king. Now, does that mean that the hunt club is not better than the field staff or the field staff's above. No one's above the other, but the field staff gets the most perks. Okay. You don't have to be a content creator to, to get the value from the field staff. Um, but the hunt club is kind of for those people that kind of want to be in the community, but they kind of want to be back. If that makes sense. Like they kind of want to like look from the outside in, they don't really want to jump into it just yet. Um, the field staff is definitely your better option, but 
that's just my opinion just because i like to get a lot of value like i just like that option of a lot of value the hunt club is still you know good also um it's just a different tier tier program um do you guys have any more questions as so that's the field staff that's the hunt club i know i probably do a lot of y'all fast but i was trying to cover as much as i could because i know questions take up some time um but hit me with your questions let me know what y'all think um, if you feel like I need to give you a call tomorrow, um, I can definitely give you a call tomorrow. We can talk a little bit more, give you time to like look around and then we can jump on a call. I can, I'll make time for every single one of you. I got you. Um, just, uh, if you got questions though, drop them in the chat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys just five minutes real quick to put your questions on and, and I'll keep it open. Not like a five minute time limit or anything. But what I'm going to do is I actually have one of our members, uh, Chris, he's a field staff. He's been a field staff for, I think he was a field staff almost as long as me when I was field staff. Um, he's actually going to, I'm going to give him the floor for a second if this thing will let me. And I want him to kind of say what he thinks about the field staff program from a member perspective. I actually just hit up Chris like 10 minutes ago and was like, hey, do you want to jump on here? So that just shows you like, you know, he, he was like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, so let me just see if this will let me get Chris on here. I really hope it does. Give you guys time to put your questions in here. Okay, let's see here. Oh man, I shouldn't have. Uh... Let's see. Chris, I may have messed this up, man, when I. Uh... Well, shoot. All right, let me do this real quick. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do. Let me answer this question. Um, Chris, for some reason, it's not going to let me do it, but I'll tell you what I'll do, bro. I'll give you a call if you want, um, and you can just chat on the phone real quick. Um, so let's see here. Ian said, is there a monthly or yearly fee? I might have skipped over it in the application. Okay, so there is a fee. Um, the people that haven't received their applications yet, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure everyone that's on this call has received their application. It's going to explain everything in detail, but I'll go ahead and, and be transparent here and let y'all know. The field staff and the hunt club both have a membership fee. Uh, we're a hundred percent self-funded business. Okay. So that money goes right back into the company. Um, like I said, I don't take hunting trips. I don't even take time off Monday through Friday, sometimes weekends. Um, but the field staff, the field staff is 30 bucks a month. Okay. That gives you all those perks. The hunt club is 50 bucks for a year. Okay. So with that payout, you send in one video. Let's just say it's an average video. I mean, it's, I don't know. You killed a six point buck with your dad. Uh, you got it on film. Dad killed it, shot it with a rifle. Um, told us the story of the buck. It was shot on your cell phone. Let's say you get like 350, 400 bucks for it. You've already paid a year's membership plus more. And that doesn't even count all the other perks. Um, the reason we do that is because that's how we pay you guys. We don't, we don't make money off apparel. We don't make money off of partners. If they give us a commission, we tell them to put that towards the discount because we don't, we're not going to drive money on top of charging people. That's, that's not right. Um, you shouldn't do that. So we take that money, we put it right back into the business and that's where those payouts come from. So if you're somebody that's pumping out 10 videos a year and they're doing good and we like them, we're going to freaking use all 10 videos. Um, that's, that's what's going to happen. I had a guy that had five videos up last year and they were, they were solid each bow season, rifle season, shotgun season, all that. Um, let's see here. Now, also with that, you can cancel at any time. So if you stay in two months, if you stay in two months, we give you a swag pack. So we actually give you a hundred dollar gift certificate to the store.
definitely cancel. Okay, hopefully I'm back. So I was talking about canceling. You can definitely cancel at any point in time. Now with the Hunt Club, that's 50 bucks for the year. That's going to cover everything. You're going to welcome package. Um, you're going to get some of those perks. You're just not eligible for payouts. So just remember that. Um, let's see here. Is there a minimum? Okay, so Caleb said, is there a minimum content expectation for field staff? Should we create content every day, every week, or every month? No, it is not. So this is a pay-to-play program is the best way to word it. If you do put those videos out, then yes, we will grade them. We will look at them. And if we use them, we will use them, okay? But you do not have to do anything. Um, the only thing I really ask you to do is show good sportsmanship and be a good pillar for the community. Guys, I don't like PETA either, but don't go on PETA's site with a service side hat and say F PETA, for example. Just that's what I mean when I say be a good pillar of the community. You know, don't have a, we all know coyotes kill fawns. Don't have a coyote picture with a fawn in its mouth and say tag PETA in it. Like just, we just ask you to be tasteful because hunters have already got a target on their head. So we just ask you to be a good pillar. That's the only thing you have to do. Now I recommend you do more so that you actually get your money's worth. Um, because at the end of the day, I don't want to just take, we don't want to take people's money. We want you to you get, get something. We want you to get more value than what you're giving us. You should be getting more back. Um, Let's see here. Hopefully that answers your questions. And guys, if I if I need to touch on anything more, feel free to text me, okay? I'm going to jump on my computer after this. I won't leave y'all hanging. I got you. Um, Phil said, Phil said, are we mainly deer, are we mainly hunting deer, doing deer videos or basically any types of hunt? So any types of hunt, but big game, is king so if you get big game you're going to get more of a payout if you have a freaking moose hunt or a big white tail deer or an elk or you know buffalo what you know whatever big game you're chasing we're going to pay we're going to pay more for that than what we would like a waterfowl hunt do i think that big game is more important than waterfowl not at all i'm a huge i'm a huge waterfowl hunter I, turkey's actually my favorite thing i'll go after a turkey before i will a 160 inch buck call me crazy but that's just what I enjoy. I love turkeys. I love getting other people on turkeys. That's just what I do. Um, but small game, we'll consider turkey in a small game. I know it's a big game animal, but turkey, waterfowl, small game, hunting predator, we will pay out for those videos if they follow the rubric. Like I said, I'll send that to you guys. Full transparency here. I want you to put videos in. I want you to get paid for them. Like, that's great. Like, the, the more the merrier for me. Um, especially when we have the member money coming in for it. Why, why not, you know, get your stuff out there if that's what you do. Um, especially a caribou. Phil said a caribou. I tell you right now, you get a good caribou video in, bro. I'll put you in there for sure myself. Um, let's see here. Shane. Shane said, how do you go through the selection process for field staff? That is a great question, Shane. I'm so glad you asked that. Um, I haven't had someone ask that yet. So what we do is we have that application process. We're going to look in. I know this may seem kind of crazy, but like it's kind of like um, it's almost like those like not IQ tests, but like where they'll show you some pictures and like they get a kind of a feel for like uh, like kind of what your thought process is. If you're like a leader or if you're like a, a helper or, or whatever, it's, it's some kind of psychology thing. Um, I can't go into details with that because I'm, I'm just old hillbilly, but um, we actually have a process we do with that, with that application, with those questions that we ask. And it kind of like helps us kind of determine who we, who we want to choose. Um, I kind of put, when I have all the states, I like to like line them all up. So let's do Kentucky. Okay. If I got Kentucky, I got 15 guys from Kentucky that applied. I'm going to line all those 15 guys up and look at those applications, okay? I'm going to be like, okay, we got bow hunter, we got gun hunter, uh, we got a hunter that just started, we got a professional. And then i tell you what I do too is I kind of troll your socials a little bit. Um, I kind of look around. I talk to you guys um, like I've been doing on the uh, work phone. I'll, I'll chat with you um, and kind of see – you know, what, what we think now, I'm not judge, jury, executioner. So don't think that, 
but I get a good feel for who everyone is. I'm, I'm really good at reading people. Um, obviously, it's, it's not a perfect system, um, but I kind of just look around and do my due diligence with you. Um, you know, if it's somebody where, you know, obviously we're all individuals. We want you to be an individual. I don't want print proper, like, you know, you got to wipe every piece of blood off the deer's head. But like that stuff's great, but I'm not going to flag you for that. It's it's you know, uh, showing sportsmanship, showing ethics, uh, passion, passion is huge. Passion is one of the number one things that I look for. You guys that message me and I've talked to, I see a lot of passion. Okay. Um, it's really easy to read someone's passion when you're talking to them. Um, let's see here. Hopefully that answers your question, Shane. Um, Ian said, how long do the videos need to be? Great question. So a good video, and this is a, a good solid time, is anywhere from like eight to 13 minutes, roughly. It could be a little less. A six minute video is pretty solid. If you can do anything from like six, really if you can do six or less, but if you can do like a six minute video to like a 13 or a 10 minute video, those are prime because one, everyone's gonna take 10 minutes to watch it. It takes, you know, you're gonna be like, oh, 10 minute video, I'm gonna watch it real quick. If you see 22 minute video, you might kind of, we all done it. You go, you kind of see what's happening. You go back real quick, see what you miss, and you kind of pick through there. So a good video time is around six to thirteen minutes, and that's a little bit of a big gap. But really, a two-minute video ain't gonna work. You know, a four-minute video really ain't gonna work unless you are freaking packing it with some action-packed stuff. Um, and I really don't like like 25, 30 thirty-minute videos. Now, if you're on a week-long backpack trip, it's kind of hard to put that into six. America or Africa. Oh. Okay, hopefully it's back. Um, so only in America or African hunts in Canada too. So Canada's okay, America's okay. I'll be honest with you, I don't know the answer to that question with Africa. Maybe let me get back to you on that. Um, let's see, that was Phil. Let me write your name down, Phil. Let me get the right answer for you there. I don't really know, but I do know that we have some members that are going to Africa this year together that met up. So something like that for sure. I know we're going to showcase. So possibly. Um, let's see here. We just want to keep it as realistic as possible. We know not everyone can go to Africa, but a lot of us can go to Canada or the U.S. So, um, but situational, situational. I mean, if you kill a lion in Africa, I, I kind of want to see it. So, you know, especially knowing the history of why they kill Africa's and uh, lions in Africa, a lot of the places it's because they're, you know, tearing up the villages and stuff or the, uh, the lion's really old or something like that. Um, let's see here. Is it a recommendation to diversify the content? For example, Douglas said rifle, bow, shotgun, etc. So that's up to you guys. Um, you know, I will be honest with you and say like white tail bow is, is a pretty, top tier like you get a good white tail bow video or big game we'll say big game moose elk things like that buffalo whatever um you get something like that on a bow even a lot of smaller games with a bow that's gonna be a topper tier now as far as rifle and stuff's concerned shotgun one of our one of our highest hitting youtube videos um got a ton of views was actually a shotgun hunt in illinois um you can check that out i think it's like 2017 um guy was like saddle hunting or something and, and freaking killed a nice freaking monster nasty public land buck with a shotgun and uh was on a do-it-yourself hunt too um so yes you can diversify but whatever you're doing i got some guys that won't touch a bow and they gun hunt and they still get videos up um just paint the story um and really give something where the viewers can take something from it um so that's all the questions it looks like we have um, looks like only one person dropped off. So I really, really appreciate everyone uh, sticking with me and, and uh, you know, answering these, uh, putting these questions in and, and listening to what service side's about. But, you know, as you still feel free to drop questions in there, hit me up, whatever the case may be. We'll go ahead and end this. But what I want to close with is with service side, and, and this is this is not a service side employee to a potential member. This is a hunter 
to a hunter or huntress right here, okay? You get what you put in. If you're one of those people like how I was and you and you make the most of servicide and you and you really dive into it and you take full advantage of those perks, I promise you guys, I will refund your money back if I'm wrong. I promise you guys, you will get the benefit of being in service side. You go on one hunting trip with someone, you've paid your membership. You put one good video out, one good video, you've paid your membership plus some, and you've got your name out there because it's a freaking solid video. We have 90,000 people that follow us on our socials. These are not bots. I go through every week, and if it's a bot, I delete it. I don't need them as a follower. Our followers are just 11 years or the people that we've met, you know, that we network with. If you guys make the most of it, I promise you, you will get your money back. This isn't a pyramid scheme. Like I took a pretty big pay cut. We won't talk about it, but I took a pretty big pay cut to come do this from what I used to do. Um, just because I love it so much. It's, it's not about the money. It's about helping hunters and having a place where hunters can get their name out there, make money, you know, all that stuff. So that's where, um, that's just what kind of what I want to end with. Do your research, check out the social media page, um, check out the Facebook, um, check out anything you want, the reviews, all that stuff. And I tell you what, I'm going to do one more thing real quick. Just give me five minutes um, of y'all's time. I tell you what I'm going to do. I am going to get Chris on the phone. Give me five minutes. We'll call this. I'm going to get Chris on the phone here. And I just want you guys to listen to what Chris says about what he thinks about a member. This is a guy that's been a paying member for a couple of years. Um, and I just, so Chris, just real quick, five minutes. Um, we'll get these guys out of here. Just kind of tell everyone what you think of service side and, and kind of your history with it. Yes, okay, everyone can hear me. Everybody can hear me. Hang on. Yes, all right, so we can hear you. I've got it on speakerphone. I'll put it okay. right near the thing. Just give, get, you know, like I said, guys, I just hit Chris up before this webinar, so I just want to give his perspective because honestly, I don't even know it. We're friends, but we haven't really talked about it, so. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway. So, hey, I'm Chris. Um, I live right here in Florida. I'm actually not too far from Justin. And I'm telling you what, I started hunting when I was 33. So I'm not, I didn't grow up hunting. I didn't do it as a kid or anything. I have extended family that does it, but I was never tagged along or anything like that. So I started in it very, very late in life. And <clears throat> I did the same thing. I saw the, the service side for field members and filled out an application, was accepted. And from that alone, I'm telling you, I learned so much just from just the small fee of what I had to pay to be a part of it, just to be a member. And I'm telling you what, I've learned probably a hundredfold, everything from learning how to track turkeys, being and going turkey hunting, going deer hunting, you know, learning everything I needed to learn, from multiple people, from the webinars, for um, editing videos, I learned so much just from that stuff. Um, and now, now I mean, um, met Justin, and I actually got a friend of mine. His name's Justin too. I got him as a member on here. And now the three of us usually go out and hunt, or sometimes it's just two of us. But I'm telling you, the meeting up with another server side member who's like-minded like yourself, who wants to continue the tradition of hunting and conservation and not waste anything. And it's more about being in the field, you know, even if it's the suck, you know, like when it's raining, when we're out when it's raining and we don't get any squirrels or, or when we out turkey hunting, it was just nothing. You still learn so much from this group and from other people and other hunters. Because there's other people that train dogs. You, if you want to learn how to train dogs, I actually bought a Weimarheimer. I'm going to train it to be a bird dog, to be a flusher. Um, and I even did a hunt swap. I'm doing a hunt swap. Justin's actually going to be, hopefully we get the tags. We're going to do a sandbar deer hunt. 
in Florida. Uh, hopefully we get that. Um, and I think there's probably another member that's going to be coming with us. Um, waiting for him to, to, to go on the, the tag and everything. To, uh, apply for it, I mean. But um, I'm telling you, if you're on the fence about it, just do the service side hunt club. And just kind of like he was saying, just going from looking from the outside in and just seeing how everything is working. But I'm telling you, if you do it, you're you're not going to be disappointed. But you got to put in the effort. You got to put in the effort. You got to meet these people and talk to them like, hey, let's meet up. You know, let's talk about turkeys. Let's talk about growing clocks. Let's be on the webinars. And the more time you put in it, you're going to benefit from it. And you can even, you know, it's just, um, it's a really good thing. I am 100% glad that I did it because if I didn't do it, I don't know if I'd still be hunting. Honestly, I don't think I'd still be hunting because I'd probably be out there on my own, just trying to figure it out, just going through randomly watching regular YouTube videos and might be getting this stuff wrong or not even doing it right. Um, but just like I was saying, what you put into it, and if you do like he was saying, you do one video, you do one good video, you already made your back, you already made your money back, that and then some. So, um, you know, you put in a video, you can even put in some of that money to buy gear or whatever that we have discounts with. You know, Rhino Blinds or um, there's other companies that Justin's trying to get his partners with. I'm not going to say which companies because, you know, we haven't established them yet. Justin hasn't established them yet. But, um, you know, but you're going to get your money's worth more than what you're going to be paying for. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's well worth it. Well worth it. So, for sure. Um, yeah, it's definitely a good thing. Um, and like I said, I mean, I'm not getting paid to tell you guys this. And, um, <laughs> I put a, I put him on the spot big time, but I was like, you know what? Why not get somebody that hasn't hunted? Because, like Chris said, I'm making a point, and me and Chris are going to hook up a lot more. Um, we live about an hour away, but we make it a point to meet up at least once or twice every single year, even if it's just a squirrel hunt. Um, now, Chris, being newer, we're going to get together this year. We're going to make it happen. Um, we've been a little busy with, with different things. I traveled a lot this year, um, but we're going to make it happen, and, and Chris has got to where he's then got his research in, so it's definitely something where – you know, now he's got his feet a little bit wet. Now I can really run him through the mud and do some good hunting. But, um, Chris, I really appreciate it, man, jumping on there. And I'll yeah. wrap this meeting yeah, up. And, yeah, and, uh, like, the video thing, it doesn't have to be just deer. Like, we're doing – I got a gator tag for Florida down here. Me and Justin and uh, somebody else is going to be going recording for a gator hunt. So, you know. It, whatever it is, if it's waterfowl or shoot, man, even if you're just doing a review on how you're training your dog or a product that you're using on your dog, or it, it, it's well worth it because you're going to get information from guys who really know what they're doing. Like there's a guy up there up in PA, he trains dogs and he knows what the hell he's talking about. Yep. And he's kind of telling me different things and what to expect with my dog and everything like that and how I need to train them and I don't, there's a lot of information out there and there's a lot of room to be not just a teacher, but to learn too. So if you keep an open mind and you, there's so much to learn. Like I, I, my goal through this and it's pretty much succeeding is try to be a Renaissance hunter. I want to be able to do it all. Just do everything I possibly can. Yep. So hopefully you guys sign up and, who knows, maybe you come down here and hunt or we'll come up there and hunt with you guys and, you know, share some stories and, you know, do whatever we need to do and have fun. All right, cool. Thanks, uh, thanks, Chris, man. I really appreciate it. I'll give you a call a little bit later, all right? No problem, man. Bye. But, yeah, like you guys heard, and, and I'll, I'll wrap it up. It's almost 8.30. I know you guys got stuff to do, but um, hit me up if you have any more questions. Like Chris said, you know, we meet up. Um, I'm going to meet up with him a lot more. I kind of forget sometimes that he just started hunting, but, um, you know, we, we hit it hard, uh, on opening weekend, a Turkey didn't get him a bird, 
um, but it's coming. Um, you know, it, it's definitely coming for sure. And and um, I've got some land near here now too, so we'll we'll get you on that bird, Chris. But um, we get out there. I, I put uh, four members on birds this year. Um, you know, it's it's going to happen. Just you got, like Chris said, it. You got to get up. You gotta you gotta go after it. If you guys go after it, I, I promise you, you're going to do well. Um, but that's all I have. Uh, I seen Phil joined up. Awesome, Phil. Um, I'll get all your stuff hooked up real quick for you. Um, and it looks like you did the yearly membership. So just so you guys know, if you do do the yearly, that saves you 60 bucks if you want to sign up. Like if you decide, hey, I'm going to give it a year. Some guys will be like, I'm going to try it for a year and see what I think. It's up to you guys. You know your finances. I don't know your finances and what you can do. I know times are hard. Whatever you can do. Um, but that's awesome, Phil. I'll get you hooked up. Um, so if you guys have any more questions, please hit me up. It's Justin, J-U-S-T-I-N, at serviceside.com. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, wherever. If you put anything in Serviceside, like on Facebook or Instagram and stuff, um, you can actually, that's me talking to you. So if you ever talk to anyone in Serviceside, that's going to be me. Um, hit me up. Um, I do have a baby on the way, so it's coming in June. So if I'm not answering on the baby's birthday, you might be talking to Allie. Um, but most of the time, it's me. You can tell because I'm usually like bro or sis. It's just how I talk. Um, but I'll see you guys on the next one. Um, I hope to see you guys as members. And feel free to hit me up if you need anything else, okay? Thanks, Brad. Caleb, appreciate it. Ian, I'll see you guys on the next one. Chris, Caleb, Tyler. All right, cool, cool. Douglas. All right, I will see you guys. Thank you again so much, and uh, just hit me up if you need anything else.